Hey guys, how's it going? It's me, Josh Halter, owner and founder of The BioDude. This is my part two video of the in-situ ecosystem Amazonia Terrarium. So this does have some upgrades to it. Uh, I got the back composite black put in. I'm using their Rio water flow system, which makes all the water flow down via gravity, which hooks back up to the pump underneath, which has everything flow. I also got some of the upgrades uh, for, the, uh, for the, the pumice stone here. As you can see, the, the tank itself is dimmable from the light to the fans which are mounted up here and you can have the fans be as strong as you want or as weak as you want so how i did with the tube coming out was i constructed a small water feature out of dragonstone which i sell here at the biodude houston and some of the pumice rock i have the tube that is connected from the back which you guys saw in the first video with it just sitting very nestly right under here creating just the very small you know stream if there's any feedback I want to give in situ so far is I love the tanks. I think they, the tank's beautiful. I wish the pump was a little better and more accessible. Um, the pump's pretty small and it's under the tank. So if that goes out, you pretty much have to take all that apart. Um, and it's, I wish we could go with half inch tubing instead of uh, the smaller, thinner tubing because you don't get as much pressure out of this to create more of a viable water area. Other than that, I love it guys, it's awesome work. And this is what they call EpiWeb substrate. Um, again, it's the same material as my Super Grow. So I do have uh, some pumice rock right here. So first I'm gonna put this rock right here because this is all part of my, my master plan here. I like, how, I like how that looks. So I'm gonna be taking a little bit more of a different approach. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be using my Hydro Grow uh, as the primary base here for almost everything. So again, the, there we go. So I'm not going a lot. You don't need, I'm not going with a, a ton of the hydro grow, but it is how I'm gonna keep track of everything. Now I'm being extra careful to make sure that I'm not getting anything trapped in the glass tracking here. As you can see, I completely removed the glass. I highly recommend you do that because the glass is only an eighth of an inch thick, which means it can break easily. So, you know, that's something that we really wanna pay attention to. And of course, as the Hydro Grow does its job, it will slowly but surely allow for the water to you know, cycle right on back through. So if you wanna to come to the front, Christina, it's very important that you wanna make sure that this is open at the bottom. So these, these, ventil these ventilators up here, you wanna make sure that you don't have any solution or any type of material right there. So again, I know a lot of you are saying, I don't really like how the hydro grow looks, blah, blah, blah. Don't worry guys, I'm gonna cover it up. But since there is gonna be so much moisture moving through this terrarium, especially with the misting system and all this and that, this tank doesn't really cause for a lot of substrate, if any substrate. But if you were gonna use it, it would be the terraflora. And again, this is more limited to what species that you can keep in here, like dart frogs. So we're not gonna need a lot of water in here. So essentially what's gonna happen is I expect everything just to keep cycling and, and, you know, and wicking through. And there's not a deep layer here. And how we're gonna plant the plants and some of the other things, um, I'm gonna show you guys how we're gonna do it. So the first thing that I'm planning is what am I gonna do with my back? So I got an extra special, beautiful bromeliad here uh, that I'm, I'm gonna put a little bit more of my hydro grill in there. Okay. And then I'm gonna take my bromeliad right here. And Christina, if you wanna zoom in, kinda in here a little bit so that way they can see. Okay. I 
I got this beautiful trio of bromeliad right here. That's what I'm talking about. Then I got a really nice hearty mixture here of leaf litter and AAA spag. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take some of this hydro grow and I'm just going to take it and I'm going to put it right in the back to kind of help fill out this back area here of the bromeliads, i.e. where the root, root base is. So you guys can, can, can get a good look about us how much of this that I'm using, okay? Then, again, I am testing this method and I have a good feeling it's gonna work in this tank. And then I'm gonna take my leaf litter mix Mix this up real good here. Okay, so next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of this spag leaf litter mix, then I'm gonna start, st I'm gonna start placing it here in the back, right like this. And I'm going to make sure that I get all four sides. That's very, very important that you provide. So my, this is my thought process. One, it's going to help centralize your springtails. So I expect springtails to do just fine in here because they're hydroscopic, means they float. Isopods though, we're going to see. I'm going to try some dwarf whites in here because dwarf whites can literally almost survive anything. Uh, so we're going to try some whites and we're going to see how they do and I'll be sure to keep you guys updated. So take a look here with how I have it all, how I have all this all settled in here and, and I, I do like that. I think that looks really nice. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put in another part of my top layer in the same spot. So since we have these vents up here with not a lot of depth. Um, to be able to function because again, you have nothing but water right in here to function everything. I'm just going to be doing a really light layer of leaves and spag moss along the top and the front. And as I'm doing it, I'm going to lightly push down, which is going to put a little bit of pressure on the system down there. So I'm going to be anxious to see how it works. My hope is that it does not impact or affect your springtail and isopod populations with them getting out. I'm also going to be paying very close attention to making sure uh, that other things start to, don't start developing uh, down here. So with, over, with my overhead with this, or overhead, excuse me, with, my, with setting something like this up and with the type of route that I'm going, I'm going to be paying, paying very, very close attention to A, the plants, B, uh, making sure that I always have enough biodegradables in here because since there's not near as much soil content, there's no soil content, you really want to take those extra steps to make sure that everything is uh, set up appropriately. On top of that, since this is going to be for some poison dart frogs, which I'm just going to surprise you guys at the very end with what they are, uh, it's going to be really cool. So interesting thing about darts is it's important that you don't give them deep water because they're terrible swimmers. Okay. What do we got going on here? All right. So I like this. It's a decent start. So what I was really looking forward to then is getting some of the springtails and isopods in here, but I'm going to actually do that last because I kind of want to pay attention to where they're going to go. And I don't want to sift them around since I'm going to be planting. So I do like, uh, I do, I, I do like how this looks and I expect it to function very, very clearly or cleanly. So I have two different pieces of sandblasted manzanita in here. Uh, these are two of the types of units that I sell on my website. So the first piece of manzanita, I'm going to put right up here going across the top. Ooh, sorry about that guys. I'm happy with that. Okay. Next, I'm going to figure out where do I want my ground cover. 
I love, these are two Selaginellas, oak leaf creeping fig, and yes, I sell both. So the first one, this is the red, the red creeping fig. And I'm actually gonna put this bad boy right over meow. Yeah. So now how I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna go down as deep as I can. You can see the epiweb layer. Now I expect the roots to grow through this layer. That does not mean that is what will happen. Do I expect the plants to do fine? I do. But I also know there's going to be some growing pains with the lack of nutrition from not having a soil. But with again, with how this tank is designed, and I want to make sure that I am doing everything right, like leaving this open without overdoing it here at the bottom. Okay, so there's the one red Selaginella. Then I'm going to do the green. Now this enclosure is gonna be hooked up to a misting system that's gonna go off multiple times a day for multiple time frames, depending on, you know, how the critters do in here. So this Selaginella I'm actually gonna put right here in the hope that we spread all through here. So red goes this way, green goes this way, and then the oak leaf creeping fig, which is probably one of my favorites. Okay, so I got some beautiful oak creeping fig here. So I'm actually gonna pull this stuff out. I'm gonna put this right here and I'm gonna stretch this across and then I'm just gonna put this right back. This is gonna grow like a weed, I can already tell you that. Um, and this is gonna literally my plan on this is to have a cascade into this and just kind of grow upwards. So I like how my ground cover's going. Uh, you know, I'm probably gonna put in a nut pot or two somewhere, but right now I'm pretty satisfied. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of my live sheet moss right here, and I am going to actually start filling in some of the sides of the waterfall. So you can sell this type of moss from me on Amazon. I sell it with free shipping, and this is a pretty good example of what you're gonna get. Okay. And again, this is dried at the moment, but once the misting system starts going, you can hear my wolfhound being such a bad boy usual okay okay let's see here let's see yeah a little goes a long way with sheet moss guys it's good stuff and i got one more spot i want to hit There's some lush green goodness here. And I'm anxious to see how all this does. I'm not giving the moss a lot of competition, keeping it simple, just, uh, just providing small spots. Now, putting moss there is a dumb idea because it's just gonna get overcrowded by the Selaginella. So. Okay, I can deal with that. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out piece number two. Manzanita piece number two. So, see here if I even want to accept this. Nope, absolutely not. What am I thinking? Okay. 
I'm going to stand back for a second. I can deal. So what I'm going to take a look at now is I have a bunch of epiphytes here. Now I'm going to figure out where do I want to them. So I'm thinking about putting one of these guys right, not up against, but I think like right here. Okay. For right now, again, I'll, I'll get these guys mounted with my mounting clips here in a second. Right now, I'm mainly looking at where do I want what. Oh yeah, okay. I gotta figure out where to put this. Oh, I would love to put one into the rock. So put this bad boy right here. That makes a little bit more sense. Bad boy right here. So again, I'll get, I'll get them all clipped in here in just a second. Got that up there. I'm gonna put this one right back here. Hide right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my clips. And you're going to take it. Are you able to see, Christina? I'm going to take the wire and I'm just going to go around like this. Around like this. And around like this. Then I'm going to wrap it in moss. Okay. Then we got some Talansias. Now I love me some Talansias. Talansias, like bromeliads, are air plants. So they do extremely well in many different terrarium settings. Voila. And then I got, let me see if I'm gonna like how that looks. All right, so I'm gonna take this, and this is an easy one because I can literally just wrap it around like here. Boom. So, I also wanted to get some more opportunity zones for them. So I got a monkey pod right here. I'm gonna put a Jenga seed pod right here. And I hope to goodness that the Selaginella grows over it, just leaving that exposed, because that would be pretty cool. And I'm gonna put a bell cup right here. So I'll have to say that I'm pretty satisfied with this, guys. Let me know what you think. I think it's about time that we start adding some inhabitants. Let's get to it. Hey, guys. So we're actually here at my crib. Uh, we've had this tank set up for a couple days. I've gotten it. Uh, I got a Miss King set up down here. I got the reservoir going. As you can see, the water feature is functioning. And I am going to add in some more springtails and some more isopods. Um, and then we're going to get a captive bred pair of Nicaraguan blue gene Ufaga pumilio put in this in situ Amazonia terrarium. Now, I am absolutely blown away by this cage, guys. Quality is great. I love this is what I'm really looking forward to. So let me turn the lights off real quick. Let's check this out. Look at that ambiance that you can create. I love the dimmable feature. I think that's a great quality. I have the fans running at around 70% power and I'm maintaining around 90% humidity. Temperature in my house is always cold. Keep it at 68, it's Texas. Uh, so temperature around this cage is around 75. I will be back here once my thermometer hygrometers come in I will be putting one of my probes 
down here. So there will be a thermometer, hygrometer, a probe in the back. Uh, so then I'll get really good temperature and consistent readings on the very top instead of having to use a temp gun. Turn the light back on. Real quick update. Here, guys, here's Hercules' enclosure. I don't touch it. I don't do anything with him except make sure he has clean waters and feed him and mist him. You guys remember the, this, this cryptanthus I put in here? It's grown about six inches. The spaghetti agave, you can see where he's clearly been nipping at it. He loves laying on this cactus back here, but these other two cactuses on this side are doing really well. Uh, the, you can see there's a bunch of new growth coming in here from all sides. He loves going in here and sleeping in his tube throughout the day, but he's just out basking right now, chilling on his bone stone, you know, taking it easy. And then up here is my pancake tortoises enclosure that he's not in here. So he is only in this cage for like 50 days out of the year when it's too cold outside. And then I put him in here for the time being. I run a power sun and a, and a rep to sun 12% in here for him. Uh, and he's doing great. So let's get back to the basics. So first, uh, let me show you how the misting system works in action. So that way you guys can, can get a good look. I don't have it on a timer just yet because I'm still playing with it. But this gives you a really good look of kind of the misting action that goes along here. I'm really expecting the Selaginella, the Talansias, and really everything just to take over and really grow around the waterfall. And that's really what I'm looking forward to. Um, the moss spore mix, I'm gonna get some of that established. You know, we're gonna see how that looks. So again, I'm really satisfied with this. One criticism I do have is that these knobs that you put on, they're held on, you have to screw them into the glass. So what I get concerned about with that is rust. So you can't really rust proof stuff and put it in the tank. So I'm gonna be paying real close attention to these screws back here. If they start rusting, I'm gonna take them out. And then there's gonna be a really small hole that's meant for a small screw here in the door like you guys saw earlier in the video that then I'm gonna to have to figure out an alternative for, which I do have the the stickies that I sell right here. So I'll probably, you know, go that route. So, um, so, you know, I think first thing I want to do is, so we've already put in springtails. I am proactively adding springtails every, I'm going to be adding them proactively straight from the master culture, say about once every two weeks until I know for certain that it's really healthy. So this is a pretty good, we'll come here to the light. This is a really good example of a Biodude springtail culture. You know, it's not a giant one, uh, but it's honestly the perfect size. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take springtails. I'm gonna go here to the very back. I'm gonna dump. Okay. And then moving forward, all I'm going to be doing is just bringing in a cup of springtails that are just floating in the water. Okay. Okay. All right. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my dwarf white isopods. I'm going to find them living in here. So yeah, there's a whole bunch. So what I'm going to try and do, instead of dumping all the dirt in here, I'm just going to take this bag that I know has some in and very carefully just put them in here without getting anything in the tracking. So that is going to be a challenge for me is not letting anything get in the tracking because if it gets in the tracking, it can be pain in the butt to get out. So they're all in the moss here. So I'm just going to take the moss, put you back there. Okay. All right. Give me one second here so you can see I got a small piece here stuck in the tracking that you got to get out. You cannot have anything left in the tracking. Cool. So as far as the Nicaraguan Pope, uh, blue jeans go, so like, like some of the other Ufagas, you've got to have bromeliads that have a whole lot of water. So these big neo regalias back here, these, the axles are plenty deep enough, especially in the middle. I have various nut pods for different tadpole rearing sites, but my goal is that they're gonna be out enough. So I'm really happy to have 
um, a captive bred pair because these guys are these guys are imported all the time, and when they're imported, they're imported cheap. So um, it's really nice to find or to have some captive bred versions of these. So now let me see here. Let me bring them out here a little closer. All right. So something that's interesting about Pomilio as well is that they come in so many different colors. You can get green ones, orange ones, red ones, blue ones, ones that are orange bastimentos covered in black spots. Like they are one of the most beautiful species of fagas, you know, in general, They're like one of the coolest type of uh, darts to have. So I'm gonna be very careful here. Okay, Christina, come around this side so that way they can actually get a good look. Okay, there we are. And we are not happy here. I see us right there. So you can see we have a little bit of the nice fine black, black speckling. We're doing a little bit of diving here. So again, I'm being real careful to make sure that when I get these guys out. Okay, look at this dude. All right, go. Go with you. So, okay, so sometimes these guys play dead when they are really, really scared. So let me get the other guy out. He'll move here in just a second. See, going back to normal now that he sees that everything's okay. That's a really cool niche that they have, and there he goes. Now he's gonna go in the, they're gonna spend a lot of their time here in the leaf litter, looking for all the springtails. Okay, so now we got the other one right here. So we believe this is a pair. Um, there we go. Look at you, dude. Yeah. So something that can be challenging with Ufagas when you're, when you're raising babies is they can come out with uh, a lot of weak forelimbs so supplementation with these guys is very, very, very important. Uh, I supplement vitamin A, Rapashi vitamin A, once every two weeks. Uh, I, then I use Rapashi's uh, Calcium Plus, and then I also uh, will be using Dendrocare. So how we're sitting down there in that bromeliab, that's gonna be a pretty common thing. So they're gonna spend a lot of their time just down there chilling. You can see this guy down here by the Selaginella, just here chilling by the trumpet pods. Let me see if I can just get this rotated without scaring him. There he goes. So I'm gonna get this shut and I'm gonna let these guys get acclimated. So I am gonna be feeding these guys every single day for the next 30 days to 60 days. From there, I am going to be offering springtails probably once a week to once every two weeks in just water form since they're hydroscopic to float. And I'm just gonna dump a bunch of them in here because I need to make sure that A, that I always have a really good healthy springtail population, especially for babies, because that's really all they're gonna eat. Number two, I wanna make sure that with, since this is a completely new way of me doing things, I have cultured char, I have cultured springtails very successfully on just the calcium. Very, very successful on just the, sorry, the hydro grow. But it does take a little bit longer. So again, we're gonna see how it goes and I'll be sure to keep you guys updated. My goal is to have this creeping fig, you know, essentially take over. I'm really excited to see some of these bromeliads and tillandsias get their color. And uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, this is the in situ Amazonia. So the biodude.com. Uh, after I get uh, probably another couple weeks of experience with this enclosure, I'll be then uh, bringing them in to start selling them. And once I do, I'll be updating the description on the website um, and on this video on YouTube, so that way you guys know. Uh, other than that, guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video and I really appreciate everybody's support.